Well, good morning, because carbs are comforting. Did you catch that one? It's great. It's great to see you guys this morning, this Thanksgiving weekend, crazy busy weekend, wedding rehearsal, wedding, youth group last night, church last night. There's church this morning, I heard. I'm not going. I'm staying home. I'm calling in sick. <clears throat> How do doctors call in sick? I'm not, I still don't know. So today we're going to talk about giving thanks, and we're going to talk about these. How many of you know what these are called? Like the real name, not some name you made up. Not thingamabobber. Get me that yellow-handled thingamabobber over there. These are channel locks. Did I say it right? I'm good? These are channel locks. Plumbers love them, because then you don't have to actually carry a wrench. You can ruin bolts on stuff. So if you were home, and you were handed... A, a bolt to put in, or if you were reading directions, let's say, for an item that just arrived at your house and was sitting in your garage in your wife's way, this of course is totally hypothetical, and you didn't have a wrench in hand and you had the bolt and you tried to put it in by hand thinking, I can do this, you would quickly realize that God did not give you G.I. Joe grip. Do you remember G.I. Joe grip? You, how many of you remember G.I. Joe grip? How many of you remember Six Million Dollar Man Binocular Vision? Come on now, you look through the eye. How many of you remember Stretch Armstrong? Yeah, right. By the way, Stretch Armstrong, BBs, when they're carried into Stretch Armstrong, look awesome. Make this really cool noise, my brother and I found out. That has nothing to do with the sermon, but it was enjoyable. If you try to put a bolt in by yourself with your hand, there's going to come a point when you realize this is futile. Resistance is futile. I cannot do this. This is crazy. I need help. So you get channel locks or a crescent wrench or a wrench that actually fits if you're smart. But you don't try to do it by yourself. Now here's what I'll tell you. And this is a confession from pastors, okay? As pastors, we, a part of our job is, is, and it talks about in the Old Testament that uh, when they found the book of the law, they explained it to the people, making it practical. And that's a pastor's job even today. Thousands of years ago, that was our job, and that's our job today to say, here's God's word, let's make it practical. This is how you can apply what's been said in his word. But the difficulty is this. There's a tendency for us to be like Dr. Oz. Do you know who Dr. Oz is? Now, I love Dr. Oz. I'm sure Dr. Oz is an amazing person. But if you watch six episodes of Dr. Oz, you will quickly realize that you cannot take all the stuff he just told you to take or you would be either taking vitamins or eating something that you can't have all day long because every show he's got two or three things that you need to take and literally you could not you could fill your home with a number I mean just I wish somebody would make a list Tracy if you have time make a list of all things Dr. Oz has ever recommended that you t I'm telling you why because every week he's got to have something to tell you to do if pastors aren't careful, what happens is we're trying to be practical. And so we say, do this. And then the next week we say, do this. And then the next week we say, do this. And before you know it, you got the bolt and you're just going, I'm exhausted. I just keep trying. And what we fail to tell you if we're not careful, and I try to do this all the time, is this. Listen, God's power is so much greater than any power you have in yourself. Now, thanks for the amen, that was great. So, I heard Billy Graham last night, there's a Billy Graham station, and the people clapped, and he said, this is like the amen corner that we had in the old days. I cannot do a Billy Graham impression at all, that was just really horrible. And by the way, kids don't know who Billy Graham is, which is sad, but that's where we're at. So, um, but the truth is, you know, he said, it was like the amen corner. He said, yeah, and you say amen to a pastor. It's like saying sick him to a dog. But anyway, so he said that, not me. So, so here's the deal. Listen, God's power is so much greater than my power, than your power. But if we're not careful, we depend on our power. We read God's word and we say, okay, now I got to do this. And God gives us a bolt and we go, okay, be nice to people. And then we're on I-4 yesterday on the way to church, and we're running a little behind after the wedding, and everybody stops. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right? 
Now, I will tell you, I did not get upset yesterday because I fully expected it. It is I-4, and I'm not an idiot. I get it. It's like, I'm going to stop on this road. It's very exciting. Good to see you. Thanks to you all for stopping. And by the way, there was no reason. No reason at all. There was not an accident. There was not a car stop. There was not a policeman waving at people. There was not a Goodyear blimp or a good rich blimp. If you get that joke, you're old. God's power is so much greater than my power. Before you decide what you're going to do for God, I want to encourage you to realize what he's done for you and recognize what he's done. So we're going to look at three things today, counting our blessings, calling on God for our spiritual family, but through prayer and considering how God might want to use you. That's third in this list of things. So number one, count your spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1 is where we're going to camp. Ephesians 1, and then we'll get over to Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, I believe the first three chapters of Ephesians basically talk about all the stuff God's done for us. People get distracted by all kinds of things in this passage, but just read it and realize what God's done. So let's start with that. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us, talking about the church, he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us, talking about the church again, for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace. That word for glorious there in the Greek is where we get the word doxology. Doxology basically means get the focus off of me and put the focus on God. It's to praise God, not me. And so what's our goal? God, you did all this stuff and you get the glory, not me. Just because I can start a bolt (laughs) doesn't mean I should get the glory. And so God, thank you for what you've done in the heavenlies. And then it continues, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Time out there. You ever see injustice and it makes you mad? You ever see somebody that should have gotten punished and you think that person should have gotten punished? The next time you look in the mirror, if you're a Christian, I want you to say to yourself, I should have gotten punished. But God gave me grace. See, that anger that you feel about injustice is the same anger that God feels against sin. And it's why he sent Jesus. So when you see injustice and you think, that's just not fair. Remember, God's the one who gave you grace. And that's why we're gracious with other people. Not because we deserve it. It's because we know we don't deserve it. So it makes you a lot nicer to others. If you're the prisoner that's in jail and somebody lets you out and doesn't let the next person out, you don't look back at them and go, nah, 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 nah. You recognize I've been given a great gift. And then it continues, with all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. Now, this is a really cool word, this word for purposed. It's the idea of God being a manager and bringing all things together together. Seems like there's a verse, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. He, he, for his good pleasure, he purposed in Christ to be put in effect when the times reach their fulfillment. Why? To bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Have you counted your blessings lately? Let me give you an example. I love this story. You've probably heard it because I love this story so much. You're going to hear it over and over again. When my kids were little... We left church one Sunday. I was tired, did not feel like making lunch. I knew lunch was home in the fridge. And I said, nay, nay, we are going to go visit the Ronald of McDonald. But I said to the children, listen, children, daddy only has a few dollars today. We are only getting cheeseburgers and water. If you complain, there will be no food and we will go home. To which the children said, okay, daddy. So we got in line at McDonald's before they put the evil, you'll never leave this drive through barricade in. By the way, if you notice, they do that with all of them now. It's my fault. I'm very sorry. That is the reason they trap you. It's because of this very story. So we pull in. 
We're getting up to the thing where we're one car behind the order place, whatever that thing's called, kiosk. And my kids started saying, Daddy, I want a Coke. Daddy, I want a Happy Meal. Look, they got the cool toy. That's what I want. I want that. I want this. I want that. I said, listen, I already told you, you're getting a cheeseburger and water. You know, water, like grandma's house. That's what you're getting. You're getting water, like out of the sink, the clear stuff, no flavor. That's what you're getting with maybe some ice, if you're lucky. Daddy, we want to... I'll never forget. I said, okay. And I pulled out of the drive through and there was wailing and gnashing of teeth in the back of the car. Oh, where are we going? What are you doing? Well, I told you guys, if you complained, we were leaving. Oh, no. And we went home and we had peanut butter. And as Jim Gaffigan says, peanut butter and sadness sandwiches. That's all that was for lunch. But I'll tell you the good news. The next time we pulled into McDonald's and I said, children, today we're going to go to McDonald's and we're getting cheeseburgers and water. Father. I would like to thank you for taking us to the place of the Ronald, of the McDonald. Thank you so much for taking us. We are looking forward to our burger with the cheese on top that's melted like plastic. Thank you, Father, so much. We're looking forward to the water. Could we have ice? Thank you so much, Father. Pulled a McDonald. Not a peep from the back seat. And I'll tell you the best part of McDonald's. Listen. If you try to get kids to clean up and you pass a plastic bag back to the back, you're going to hold the plastic bag for a half hour. Somebody get this plastic bag. Somebody. Come on, we got to pick up the trash in the back of this car. You're going to hold that plastic bag for eternity, it seems. But if you have a bag with cheeseburgers in it, you start to move it to the back. You can just release it at any time because they have grabbed it out of your hands and they are quickly distributed throughout the vehicle. And then quiet begins. And then you pass water. 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 There's always the last kid. Hey! 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 And there was silence all the way home. Why? Because my kids realized if they were ungrateful, they were getting nada. Nunca. No ma. Nacho cheese. What if? You only received what you were grateful for. What if you and I only received what we were thankful for? You know, when's the last time you thought... By the way, Romans 8.28 says God is working all together for the good. This verse talks about Jesus being this manager. He's managing things. doesn't mean everything's good, but he manages it. He works it together for the good. So, for example, do you remember when you were in junior high or high school and you prayed for that person? I just love them and I want to marry them. Jesus, please let them notice me. I just, oh, Lord. And now you look back. Thank God for Facebook. You're like, oh, God save me from that one. When's the last time you thanked God for unanswered prayer? Right? <laughs> You're laughing a little too loud so we know that you saw somebody. But when's the last time you thanked God for unanswered prayer? You remember when you lost that job and you were just mortified? And you were angry, upset, it was unfair? But now you look back and said, you know what? I would not be where I was now if God had answered my prayer and let me stay where I was. Have you thanked God for that? Because the truth is, somebody just gave me a, hey man, I get a witness in the back. That was great. The truth is, for us, it's hard for us to remember once we've moved past something. We've got the next speed bump. So take time during Thanksgiving, not only to thank God for the good things that he's brought into your life, but thank him for those disappointments of that missed date. That missed opportunity, that person that didn't like you, and now you're like, oh, I'm glad they didn't like me. That job that said, thank you for your service. Take time. Because here's the deal. Listen, we're Americans. Can I, can I tell you that a sermon should work in America that works in a hut in Africa? And yet we turn this passage into a passage about how much money and stuff we have, which is ridiculous. I have complained this week about a copy machine, a magic machine that I push print in this building and it prints stuff in the other building and I complain not fast enough. I complain that traffic is only going 68 miles an hour. Do you realize your grandparents 
thought that, that going that fast was bad for you, which it probably is actually in hindsight, right? I complained about the internet being too slow this week. Anybody here complain about their internet being too slow? Yeah, repent, right? We don't even realize how much we've had. And so during Thanksgiving, I want to encourage you. Don't be Americans for a minute. Be Christians. And recognize you have been blessings just poured and poured and poured and poured. And all we can do is think, but this isn't working right. God, thank you for all the blessings. You, even the unanswered prayers, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. I don't know why this thing isn't working out, but I know you're working it all out for the good. God, I don't know why the doctor just said this, but you're working it all out for the good. God, I don't know why that friend said that, but you're working it all out for the good. God, I don't know why that person's not coming for Thanksgiving dinner, but you're working it all out for the good. God, I don't know why that person is coming for Thanksgiving dinner, but I know you're going to work it out for the good. By the way, if you don't want to see him at Christmas, somebody posted, uh, bring up politics. It'll work great. All right, here we go. Charles Stanley said this, and I love old Chuck. Here he goes. Gratitude produces deep, abiding joy because we know that God is working in us even through difficulties. Even through difficulties. So are you going through a hard time? God, I'm not going to be thankful for this hard time, but I'm going to be thankful that you're with me in this hard time. God, you know this discouragement I'm dealing with. You know this frustration. You know this prayer that's going unanswered. I don't know why, but God, I know you will work it together for the good. Because here's the deal. Listen, the truth is this. Your worst day, your very worst day, there's going to be a day that I'm going to say, what does this button do? And then I'm going to say, Jesus, what are you doing here? Oh, no. There's going to be a day that I'll say to my wife, no, no, I really think I'm sick. Jesus, what are you doing here? And on my tombstone, it'll say, I told you I was sick, right? On my worst day on earth, when I'm the most miserable, and God doesn't answer my prayer the way I want my prayer answered, is the best day of my life. Because the day I close my eyes here is the day I open my eyes in heaven. And like I was told this morning, you can weep that I'm gone, but you don't need to weep for me because I'll be partying. My mother's been Southern Baptist since she was eight, and she even said she would dance in heaven, so... Number two, call on God for your spiritual family. You ever get unfocused? You ever lose your focus while driving? You ever see somebody looking in the rearview mirror and running off the road? A lot of us live that way. My cousin dropped a cassette tape. Now, years ago, they had these things called cassette tapes. And it would spit it out at you sometimes. And then you'd have that weird wobbly part in the middle of your favorite guitar solo. Right. You'd fix it. She dropped a cassette tape. She reached over to get it, ran off the road, hit a culvert, broke her femur. That's a lot of fun. What happened? Distraction. Some of us are so busy looking at our problems or our lives. We're looking in the rearview mirror. We got the, we got the thing down. We're looking at ourselves and our issues that we forget. To look around and pray for others. Listen to what Paul says. Paul, who's been in jail, who's been beaten, who had people do a fast to try to kill him. I mean, all kind of people were after him. And here's what he says. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking. By the way, the Greek word here, that's a great translation. I keep asking. Over and over and over. I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom. This word wisdom comes from where we get uh, the word sophisticated. It, it, it basically is this idea of clarity, seeing something clearly. Do you ever have something and you're like, God, I'm not sure what to do? The Bible says pray for wisdom. It's one of the prayers God answers. God, give me wisdom, which means give me clarity. Help me see clearly now the rain is gone. I hope you have that in your head all day. It's got to be better than gobble, gobble. And then it says, and then it says, and revelation. So what's the difference between wisdom and revelation? Well, re uh, wisdom is the idea of seeing clearly. Revelation is the idea that something's covered up and all of a sudden you go, oh, that's what I need to do. It's the idea of revealing something. Are you asking God for an answer? Well, wisdom 
And revelation is what you need, so you may know Him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that in order that you may know the hope to which He's called you. By the way, the worst thing in life is to be hopeless. So we want the hope that He's called us, called us to. The riches of His glorious inheritance, not this earthly inheritance, glorious inheritance in His holy people and His incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength He exerted when He raised Christ from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come. You think Paul got excited here? And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Paul says, I'm praying for all of you. I keep praying for all of you, no matter what I go through, no matter what I'm dealing with. We don't know if at this time Paul actually had literal chains on his hands when he wrote this. And he said, and I pray for you. So if you're a visual person, I want to give you a hint on how I pray. Maybe it'll help you if you're ADD like me and you're very visual. So when I pray for my family, I just go oldest to youngest. So Grammy gets prayed for first, right? My wife second, right? And then I pray for each of my kids. And then I pray for the church. So I go to my staff meeting and pretend I'm in my staff meeting. I just imagine sitting around and I pray for each person as I see where they sit. Why? Because I'm very visual. So I know where they sit. Some of you are list people. So you just make a list. It's okay. It's the same thing. So maybe you make a list. And then I imagine myself coming to church. And so I pray for everybody on the stage. And then I I know where a lot of you sit. Now some of you move once in a while. Mess with me. One of our ladies who usually sits right here sat over there today. And she knows I'm talking about her right now. But I just imagine walking through and praying. Praying for the children's ministry. Praying for our kids. You see how how that works? You just lift people up. And you do it over and over again. Let me tell you something about praying for other people. It gets your eyes off of you. Because you know what happens when you get your eyes on you? You run off the road. You become selfish, self-centered. By the way, even praying for yourself all the time can become a selfish exercise. Did you hear me? This is Paul. He's been through so much, and yet he says, I'm praying for you all the time. What happens? Because you look up. Instead of driving with the rearview mirror looking at yourself, you're looking around. God, thank you for that person. Odd how harsh times recalibrate our gratitude. Small gifts are trash to spoil brats, but the poor in spirit, every trinket is solid gold. You know, if we're just honest, sometimes we're just spoiled. Let's just admit it. God, I'm just spoiled. That's why I want, want, want. Number three, consider how God can use you now. Now, last week I bought, brought two pounds of jelly beans here. And I had planned on bringing them back this week. But there are, I won't say none, but there are few jelly beans left. And yes, I did share four or five of them. They're delicious. Buttered pop. I did not get a single buttered popcorn. I will say that. If I did, it was by accident. But the truth is this. You all have gifts. And as small as they may seem, just like Beth said, sometimes just telling somebody to enjoy this day. Or stopping in Walmart when somebody's getting flowers and you see that they're crying and you say, do you need a hug? Sometimes going out of your way to bring somebody soup or mow somebody's yard or just check on somebody who you haven't checked on in a while. We have somebody in our church that visits one of our members who has memory issues now and just checks on him and says, hey, you doing okay? Just a small way to reach out. This Thanksgiving, I want to encourage you. I know, I know some of you, when you have your family over, you're already doing this. Oh, no. Right? I want you to instead to think, God, help me look for a way to be a blessing. By the way, did you know that you don't have to discuss politics with somebody, even if they want to? Did you know that? Did you know you don't have to have a discussion you don't want to have? So if they bring it up, you can just go, yeah, okay, Uh uh-huh, okay, man, impressive. Well, you know so much. Yeah, You're, you're brilliant. Well, you study that issue a lot more than I have, apparently, right, right? And then you can look for opportunities. Hey, how can I pray for you today? 
How can I pray for you this month, this year? How's God blessing you? Look for those opportunities to just drop those jellies. I'm going to give you an example in just a minute. Ephesians 2, 6 through 10, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So you don't need to be going around going, Oh, God just hates me. In order that in the coming ages He might show what? The incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us. In Christ Jesus, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. Time out. That means you don't have to compare yourself to other people. That means when somebody gets a raise and you don't, you don't have to say, Oh, I can't believe I didn't. You're not in competition with them. When somebody gets praise and you don't, you say, God, you know. Because His grace, you're saved by grace, not because you're a better Christian or worse Christian. It's because He loves you. So when you look for somebody that needs grace or something that's unfair in life, you need to look in the mirror and go, grace is unfair. Thank you, Jesus. For we are, listen to this, God's handiwork. So God's gifted you. You ever look at your hand? I mean, I can get a bolt started. Now, granted, I can't get the bolt all the way in. But I can get the bolt started. You know, something I've learned, I've gotten foam on my fingers before. If you haven't done that yet, you ever had that spray foam? Get that on your fingers someday. You will think it will never come off. And a few weeks later, you will be amazed at the human hand because that foam will be gone. It is amazing how we are made. And the Bible says we are, Tracy, does that surprise you at all that I've got foam on me? Okay, the Bible said, by the way, it does not come off of shirts or shorts. I never throw them away, but I can show. Okay, anyway, so for we are God's handiwork. You know what that means? It means God puts you together the way you are. Some of you are better at certain things and worse at other things. Don't regret who God made you to be. Just be who he made you to be because what happens? Created in Christ Jesus, listen, listen, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So I want to give you an example of a coincidence yesterday. Peter Lord used to say, a coincidence is a miracle where God chooses to remain anonymous. <laughs> He'd always laugh after. Ah. <laughs> so this is one of those coincidences yesterday. So I do this wedding for this young lady who I've known forever. And by young, I mean she's 30 now. And afterwards, I have to the marriage license and I'm getting the maid of honor and the best man to sign it and they sign it and the maid of honor kind of walks to the side as we're watching them take pictures and she says you know i grew up in coco i said oh that's that's great she goes i said "Uh, what do you do now oh i'm a i'm a lawyer in new york i'm sorry no i didn't say i'm sorry i said that's great i said the only person i know in new york was a producer for cbs news she goes my husband's a producer for nbc i said oh that's really cool so you guys live in the city well so we talk a little bit and I said, where'd you go to school? She said, I go to Space Coast. Well, what she didn't know is there's a teacher at Space Coast who lost two family members in the last month and a half or a few months. Who's been discouraged because of everything going on. Who, do you really want to be a teacher during COVID? You hear me? Who's been going through a lot and I've been praying for every day. God, would you help her through this? And this young lady, I said, oh, do you know this teacher? And this young lady's eyes light up and she goes, She is my favorite teacher. She made such an amazing difference in my life. It's remarkable. So you know what I did? I said, hang on, I'm going to send her a text. Can you take a picture with me? Selfie. I sent her a picture. I said, this fancy New York lawyer just wanted you to know that you made a huge difference in her life. Sent the text. Threw a jelly bean. See, that teacher for years has thrown those jelly beans and didn't know what's going on and is now going through a time where it feels like there's no jelly beans left. And what does God do when we go through a hard time? Sometimes he just reminds us, I'm still with you. Don't fear. Just keep walking. Just keep moving. Just keep going forward. And it could be that just like Beth, you're the very one who's supposed to say to somebody, it's okay. And through God's power, he gives us the strength. Listen, anybody who knows me knows I'm not smart enough to connect somebody who I just met with a teacher that goes to our church who needed, I mean, there's just no way I'm not that smart. But God's good. 
So he knew just what she needed and just where I needed to be to bring that message. God will use you if you'll let him. My prayer this week is as we go through this week, count your blessings. Take time today as you walk out to your junky car that you hate, that you left trash all over, or you don't have enough cup holders, or whatever your excuse is for not liking whatever it is. Or if you love your car, God, thank you for this vehicle that actually starts. Or thank you for this vehicle that sometimes starts, right? Whatever your answer is. But count your blessings. Pray for others this week. And then finally, look for opportunities. Even if you're home alone on Thanksgiving. Ask God to show you how to go out of your way to be a blessing to somebody on Thanksgiving. Maybe send a text, maybe an email, maybe go look for a homeless person and give them some food, whatever. Say, God, show me how to be a blessing today. If you're here today or you're watching online and you've never given your life to Christ, you can do that today. I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian, the fact that Jesus died for us. Why? So that we could be with him. When we surrender our lives to him, we come under his authority The Bible says that he takes our sins and gives us his righteousness because he died and rose for you and me. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for these moments together. I pray that you'd bless each one here, each one watching online. Father, even some who may watch this days, weeks, even months from now, I pray today, Lord, that you would bless them right where we're at. I thank you that prayer can work even ahead of time. Father, I pray for that one today who's here, who's frustrated dealing with a heavy difficulty, a heavy burden, I pray right now they would know and have your power to be more than an overcomer even now. Lord, we thank you for these moments together. In Jesus' name, amen.